Um, thank you very much for this opportunity to present today. I think uh, the initiative you, you, you have uh, with uh, this conference uh, and to make available the material and open discussion is, is really, really good and important. Uh, and so I'm more than glad to present. Um, just a few words about me uh, after this slide, but at the moment, um, because I, I, I'm pursuing an academic career, I am with the uh, uh, University of the West of England. This is the UK in Bristol, and also with the Bristol Robotic uh, Laboratory, because other than teaching, um, I'm doing research. My field is basically robotics and autonomous systems. And uh, yes, today I'm going to talk and present uh, my one of the work. I'm, I'm actually say ongoing work. I'm, 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 I'm taking forward, which is basically related to a cross-checking or auto, autonomous cross-checking of model, in particular for this presentation, because it's relevant to the conference, that will be uh, based, I mean, an approach based on OSLC. Okay, a little bit about me, um, just to give you an idea uh, about my background, it's quite, I would rather say, a variety. Um, because I've been doing basically uh, research, as I mentioned, in robotics and autonomous system autonomy, but in very, very dif different domains, means uh, land robot, aerial robots, and um, maritime robots. So it's like I've, I've been covering the different domain and now I'm moving to the space. And also I've been working in factory automation. It's a kind of a mixture of different domains um, I would rather say um, domain for the application of my work. However, the technology and the methodology is nearly the same in each of the cases. It's basically to develop that uh, autonomy for decision making for the systems. And I've been involved in different research process uh, funded by different uh, funding bodies from basically the US, the UK, and EU. And um, as I mentioned, one of the work and the one I'm presenting today is related to basically multidisciplinary development or development team working uh, on the development of a, a system. I must say, well, I said that at the beginning, this is an ongoing work. And obviously, I am not an expert on uh, OSLC. Uh, okay, so any um, advice and any input is more than welcome. Just I'm going to present how I, I am planning and I'm implementing it in, as part of the solution for the problem I'm, tack, I'm tackling. I will try to describe, describe as uh, brief as possible uh, the problem and the approach. So for this presentation, I have a brief intro plus the background. Then I will talk about an example, an application example, the approach I have been uh, taking, and then a few comments on uh, the reflection of the work. So basically, just to place uh, and the, the, the environment I, I've been working in, um, I'm going to talk about uh, the, what, what kind of uh, system I'm focusing um, on. I'm focusing on what we call cyber physical system. Maybe you are already familiar with them. Now, now they, I think, are they, they are quite popular. They, they are actually a kind of of evolve or part of the evolution of what we initially call real-time systems. And in particular, I'm looking at those who are or which are dependable, right? Um, that's, that's what you will see if, and, and basically an avionic system as a, an a application example. One of the features because of that dependability characteristic of the system is being, a, a, a being high um, integrity system. Okay, that means we'll, uh, it's all about having the safety in place, the security, and all of those aspects basically of embedded system. If we look at the development process, and I, I just draw a simple picture, just um, uh, hopefully all of you agree with me. If we don't tackle the race at the very beginning, uh, at the end, that will be more costly um, and we'll be facing even more risk. In, in this kind of development of this system. It's, this is a, something we can apply for all of the system, but in particular for this type of system. So the idea is to try to do some work at early stage of development. So 
So then hopefully we can reduce. I'm not going to say we, we are going to eliminate that because that's not true, but hopefully we can reduce those uh, risks and um, uh, hearing uh, the cause. One of the things we are looking at is to carry out pre-verification and pre-validation of uh, the system. And for that, we need uh, some modeling of the system. So that will be a model-based uh, system development. Um, when we, we look at that uh, modeling of the system, one of the things, um, okay, sorry, my computer wasn't responding, now it's on. We are looking at that modeling of functional and non-functional requirements, okay? This is very general uh, for any system. And for this particular system, because of the complexity and they are being complex more and more, we are looking at um, um, multiple models and mul a big team, which is usually multidisciplinary. So, Basically, what we want to do is once we have the model of the system, we are going to have, or we want to have a, pro a process uh, for cross-checking, for verification and validation that must be agile because basically, since we have different development teams, there will be different tech clocks involved in the process because one, once one team is working on one part of the, or one aspect of the system, the other have to wait for the update in order to update this model. Basically, what we have is a, a, a kind of a big picture like this, where we have a, a, a system and we have different view of the same system because of the different discipline involved and the dif different stakeholders in the system. Ideally, and this is not possible, unfortunately, is to have only one model so everybody can work on that model, but everybody knows that no possible. Why not? Because of the nature of the different uh, models for the system. For example, if, we, if some, some of us of the system engineering is using uh, CSML for the modeling of the system, maybe we have involved, uh, it's not common in industry, but it could be in, 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 in another project, we, we can have some people working with mathematical models, right? So the, the nature of the two models, one is graphical and the other is based on symbols using mathematics are, are, are different. We, we cannot have a, one model. That is ideal. What we could have is an approach that is using an unified notation. So we pick up the notation of each of the model and we combine of that notation, all of that notation in, 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 in one block. And with that, we can uh, connect the different um, notation from the different system models. And with that, we will be able to uh, facilitate the cross-checking I'm, I'm talking about. I will show an example, so that will be uh, easier for you to understand the idea. A little bit about the existing technology. Obviously, I highlighted uh, the uh, OFLC because it's the one I'm using, but there are other tools with multi-view, multi, multi, multi single-view tools. Some of them are coming from process, some other from standard, but this is just with some reference, if then you want to check them, they are available in this presentation. Just, just to let you know, I'm aware that there are some mod, uh, modeling tools around that can be used or potentially be used. Um, some of them, obviously, we, we are not talking about a modeling tool for uh, OSLC, but the QMI that will be a kind of means, uh, a tool to do the integration of the, the model. If we focus now on the application example, uh, we are going to look at, well, formally the automatic flight control system, autopilot to make it easier, okay? This is for from an aircraft. Um, for that, we are going to be focused on a specific, <coughs> excuse me, a specific discipline. And because of that, or those discipline, there will be different model. Those discipline will be control, software, and hardware, okay? So it's like for, the design and development of this system, there will be, for this example, uh, three different disciplines involved, okay, as I mentioned. And then each of these disciplines, okay, when I say discipline is control, hardware and software, they have different, you know, stakeholders from those uh, disciplines have different tools to do the modeling. For example, uh, for software modeling, they usually we use UML, okay? 
for hardware, in the case of avionics, there is a language specifically designed for that, which is the AADL, okay? Uh, architecture analysis and description language. Um, and then for control, for those who are familiar with MATLAB, we can use MATLAB Symbolism, okay? Three different tools with three different type of uh, models. If we look at different scenario for this uh, application example, we can say, okay, well, for the software application, any modification we are going to do in the software application will have an impact on the hardware and on the control mode. The hardware control mode, uh, the hardware, con um, hardware platform model in turn will have an impact on the software uh, model and the control model. And the same for the control model, which will have an impact on the hardware and the software mode. So the point is every time we do a modification and update on one of the model, that change should be reflected on the other model in order to be updated and obviously to be um, consistent with the, the, the other side of the, 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 the system model. This figure is just to show you um, the, the system we are discussing, the autopilot is very simplified, very simple, obviously much more complex than this, but I try to represent by means of different blocks, the part or the important part of the system. And then I point out the control engineering side, the software engineering side and the hardware engineering side. So basically the three disciplines I mentioned before, but the, the example is simplified, but is uh, enough to explain the concept. <clears throat> Obviously, for each of the discipline, will be a, a stakeholder behind or a team of uh, stakeholders. If we come back to that uh, figure I showed before with different view of the same system, now obviously more simplified because we have three disciplines in, involved in this example. We have on, on one side the control engineer, on the other side we have a, a hardware engineer and a software engineer. Each of them will have different concerns on the system. For example, the control engineering, we, we focus on the functionality of the system. And for example, we'll be focused on a quality criteria, which is for example, controllability, stability, and, and other. For the case of the hardware in, in, engineer, there will be a, aspect uh, of interest like uh, allocation of resource. And the same for the software. The software engineer will, will have some concern, for example, and I'm not saying that's the only one, it's just to give you an example. On, on, for example, uh, predictability of the software or the software execution. Now, let's, let's show a picture which um, give you a little bit of more details of what I'm talking about different models of the same system. So on the top of this figure, we have a classical uh, block diagram for a control system. For those who are familiar with Simulin from MATLAB, this is a way to uh, do a model, a model for a system. And we are using, well, Laplace, blah, blah. We, we are not getting into details on, on those. That's not the point for today. Then we have on the bottom right, we have the, um, the UML model for the software. And on the bottom left, we have uh, the hardware model. All of the same system, if you see just at the glance, the nature of each of the system, even if all are block base are different, okay? So in different color, matching the color of the arrow, I, I, I show on, on, on the left, uh, the connection between them. Because for example, if we look at number one, that will be modification on the software side, the impact on the control side. For example, if we change latency for the execution of the software on the software side, that will have an impact on the control loop because that, will impact on the stability of the control. This is very simple and basic, but this is, this is actually what's going on. And there are other examples listed here. I'm not going to go through them. It's just to give you an idea that definitely they are cross-linked uh, with each other. And, and, and there are uh, an example from software, as I mentioned, software to control, control to software, hardware to control, and so on. Now, how to connect or what is the proposal to connect um, this uh, model is basically using what I call a kind of a smart database ontology. For those who are uh, familiar with ontology, it's basically knowledge representation. And then we use reasoning to work on that uh, semantic 
or semantic uh, uh, description of the information. It's basically we stored knowledge, knowledge about the knowledge, uh, the knowledge, sorry, knowledge about the connection between uh, the different models. All of that will be stored on this uh, smart database or ontolog ontological database. And then the reasoner will be in charge of doing the links and uh, realize. And actually, if we want to use a more um, a specific term that will be a kind of, in this case, applied to, to, to this scenario will be situation awareness of uh, um, the change doing in one, um, one model and the impact of that change on the other model. This table is just to summarize. Uh, for example, if we look at the software model, the impact of the software model on hardware and control, what I did is, okay, software model on one side, end-to-end -end latency, that will have an impact on hardware and an impact on software, okay? On the software model and in the, hard, uh, sorry, the software model, an impact on hardware model and in control mode. Here are listed basically the property elements that will be uh, uh, affected because of this change. For example, latency will affect the execution in the hardware and that will be a delay uh, or a different delay on the control side and so on. So I uh, just define different color to make a difference between what is at the computation level and what is at the communication level, because we can have, for example, a delay in communication or a delay in processing. Okay, this is just to give you an idea of the different or possible uh, parameters that we can, or property, we can modify in the software model and the impact that it will have or they will have on, on the software, on the hardware and, and the control side. Now, I mentioned we, we are going to use um, that ontological database, okay? So that will be to link um, the different models. And this is just, for the example, where we have hardware, software, hardware. So chain on the hardware will have an impact on the software, which in turn will have an, um, an impact on, hard, on the hardware model. Now, the plan is to use the cloud, okay? Um, all will be based on that. Obviously, um, as I'm going to mention in the next few slides, the implementation will be done in this case for this approach using the OSLC, okay? And um, basically will be adding to the cloud the analytics part by means of the uh, ontological database and then connecting the model. And the OS, um, LC will facilitate the connection uh, between them. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, we look at again this initial case right here. Now, using the cloud, we look obviously like this, where everything is going through the cloud. Now, as I mentioned, that cloud for this approach will be based on uh, uh, OS uh, CL. A little bit more about the ontology because that is a kind of, you know, is the heart of this approach. It's, it's a way, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with it, but for those who are not familiar with ontology, we have a way to do a description of knowledge. And if we want to represent graphically that knowledge, it could be done by means of what we call a semantic diagram, like this one. For example, in the middle is thing, which is very general. And from this point, we start defining a discipline is a thing, a model is a thing, a parameter is a thing, and so on. And then, uh, because engineering is a discipline, we have this connection here. We have the, uh, the other connection, for example, hardware. Hardware is an engineering, uh, hardware engineering, software engineering. So it's, a, it's an engineering, which in turn is a discipline. But also, for hardware, we have uh, a diagram. Okay, for representation, which is the model. So then we can define a parameter of that uh, software model, which is, for example, the software foot, uh, footprint. Okay, the software footprint, just to clarify, is how much hardware is needed to uh, deploy and run that uh, software. Okay, but that will have an impact, obviously, in the hardware consumption. That's why we describe here, here is very, I believe, clear, describe the impact and the parameter we are dealing with on the uh, software side. The same for from the hardware side. 
Okay, this is basically uh, the semantic to describe uh, by mean of an ontology the knowledge we are going to have in this kind of framework. One of the tool, which is a free tool, uh, I think it was developed by uh, Stanford University in the US, uh, is Protege. By mean of Protege, we are able to um, implement an ontology. Okay, and in this example, this is the user interface of the Protege. Protege. What I did is just to incorporate all of this description in order to create an ontological model. Okay, and we just connect the different um, model by mean of setting the different parameters, parameters that could be modified, and then we have an impact on the other side, on the other mode. <clears throat> now, a little bit of more, what I understand you are more interested in is how to do the implementation. And, and as I mentioned, this is an on, on, ongoing work. Um, that's uh, for this, I take the, the first step which was actually do the implementation of the, the software model service, because now we are looking at, at that particular model. So using the OSLC for the interface, the service interface, um, I start defining that model because with that, with the, this, um, well, this is an XMS file, but we can describe that connection as I mentioned. But just to be clear, this interface by mean of OSLC has nothing to do with the ontology. This is just only to facilitate the integration and the connection of the services coming from the different modeling tools with a tool that will be looking after of um, the, the, the possible impact between um, modeling tools and models. And obviously that will be connected with the, um, with the ontological database. Things for each of the uh, model service, we need uh, the shape, right? The model shape and the query. Also, I am providing how to, uh, you know, specify them by mean of the XMS file for the OSL approach, the, the notation shape. <clears throat> you see here I'm describing the, the footprint parameter from the software and the performance quality from the software. And then, <clears throat> Uh, I, I add some description uh, for, for the link. And then also I include the, the query for the model because obviously we need to carry out a query to say, well, what uh, model will be impacting in another model? And that will depend on the parameter where we are modifying in the, the, the source model. So we need the, 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 mo the model query as well uh, to, to run the, the query. This is, well, this is CSML. Uh, obviously, this is an activity diagram. And here I'm trying to explain because actually, uh, and I think it's, it's part of the philosophy of the OSS, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, of the OSLC, uh, being a kind of SOA, service-oriented architecture as well, uh, because it's all about discovering uh, capability. In this case, will be services. The services will be actually, in my application, those to describe connection between models, as I saw the, the example before, and then obviously retrieve that information. So we have a kind of uh, functionality here, uh, this activity uh, describing that, where we have that application, as I said, the application that will be looking after the different services in the framework, querying the services, because once, since, since the soft SOA uh, characteristic uh, of the, the approach, each of the tool will be able to uh, uh, advertise the service. So the this tool will be able to discover all of the services available. And if there is one service, then they will be doing a kind of um, uh, match uh, make. This is for the discovery and, and, and retrieval of the service. And then once uh, this, the, the, the different tools are on in, in the framework, the tool um, will start checking, okay? There will be, start, uh, they will be, you know, there will be a kind of uh, execution of the information I store in the smart database. And based on that information, the, the tool itself will facilitate the link between the, the tools. And also every, the plan is 
every time we do a modification on one side, that modification should be reflected on the other side. Uh, I, I will speed that a little bit because of the time. Um, as reflective remarks, because of uh, this work, um, one of the thing is, as I mentioned, updates should be done in real time, but not necessarily should be implemented on the other side in real time because of different reasons. Um, but also, there are obviously some benefits in order uh, to, you know, when, when you're using this approach, and, and the plan is to uh, avoid those deadlocks from the different um, teams involved in the system, okay? But obviously, uh, if the, the approach is, is complex just by nature, right? Because you have to create all of the connection and everything, and obviously we, we need to reach a point where we need to assess. I mean, I believe for a simple system, maybe it's easy to, to, to do that uh, implementation, but maybe for a more complex system will be uh, um, much more complex. So some, some automation is needed to create uh, the framework. Um, the, uh, as to model impacts, not necessarily, mean, not necessarily means we need to, yes or yes, to do the implementation on the other side, because we can also, for example, assess uh, the performance of, of the system if we do this chain or another chain, and then we just implement the best, the best uh, solution. So it's like we, we can have a clear thing work. Now more focus on OSCL and the approach. Obviously OSCL is a good driver for the framework, but it's other complexities to the framework. That's the, 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 the other side. Um, and also because of that, it's facilitating the interconnection between the modules, okay? But there are some effort to do to produce the, the, the XMS file to, to implement uh, uh, the framework using the OSCL. Definitely, there is a need, and it's a kind of call for myself to uh, start uh, uh, developing a, a process that must be automated in order to facilitate the generation because every time you have to produce that interface in OS and for each of the um, parameters that will be uh, some work involved. And as I mentioned, this is a kind of initial idea, it's a proof of concept. Um, I, I, I've been, before this approach, I've been using my own approach as to link different models, but then when I learned, uh, I learned about uh, the OSL, uh, OSCL, I thought, well, this is a, a really good tool um, to do the, the integration of the model. So that will be actually the development of uh, the framework prototype using uh, one of the, the tools that are available for the OSCL um, implementation. And obviously any advice for that or anything is more than welcome because as I said, this is just uh, the beginning of, of this project. Okay, and here are the reference. I think I'm a little bit late, but this, this is everything. Thank you. If Thank there you are any much, questions. Carlos. Yeah. Uh, indeed, very interesting. And I think you are on the right track. You, you should definitely interact with the community to give you uh, some advice on how to implement. Um, but uh, your approach overall uh, is the right approach. You, you got to the, to the right technology. Um, uh, there is a couple of questions. Uh, one is asking about uh, the implementation of the ontology. So there's a question about what technology you're using there and what that database, how you store the ontology, if you are familiar with those details. Right, yeah. You know, when, yes, I can answer that. Uh, you know, the implementation, because I'm using ontology, first of all, for other projects I'm working on, the implementation of the ontology, and actually, if you allow me a second to get back to this slide, uh, to, 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 uh, this one. See, this is the interface from Protege. Protege is a tool, it's a software application, um, but Protege, this is the user interface, but Protege, Protege generate a, a OWL file, okay? And that will be the file for the, this kind of a smart database. With that file, I can, you know, using that file in, um, if I, I'm programming, for example, one of the application, uh, um, not for this one, for another project, I'm, I'm using um, Java. So I, I create my application. So you're Java. using a flat, you're using a flat file. 
yes. on, on your access to file um, using Java. Yes. Okay. Um, there was a question by uh, Jinji. Um, yeah, he's asking uh, how how do you how do you map between the ontology uh, and the OSC services? Um, right. So, yeah, understood. Um, what happened is, if you don't remember, I mentioned the application that we'll be looking after, uh, the different uh, modeling tool in the system. I, I think I call it the acronym AMA, this Autonomous Modeling Analytics, AMA here. That application will be an application, for example, again, it's not developed yet, okay? What I just developed is the ontology and I started writing the interfaces, okay? The services interface. So the plan is, for that application uh, to include uh, the OS, uh, OSLC interfaces and also the interface to the ontology. Okay. Uh, I think we are way over the time. So that was very uh, interesting, Carlos. Uh, I definitely encourage you to uh, interact with the uh, community um, and the uh, yeah, yeah, you you can definitely get some practical advices uh, to continue your journey. Please. Yes, and please. Hopefully, we we will see in the future the the results of your your research here. Yeah, everybody is welcome. Please contact me. I provide you. I I'm, I think you have my email address. Uh, please feel free to contact me anytime. I'm very busy, like everybody, but I'm more than happy to interact. And indeed, yeah. I want to do that, and I want to hear from you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Welcome. No problem. Um, so our next uh, speaker, moving on to, to, to our next uh, 